start the video, I wanted to thank you guys for your support. We're at a thousand subs today, and I think that's pretty awesome. And hopefully we'll keep going pretty strong. Alright, so here's the kit that we're going to be working with today. It's the Boosted Bertha, and as you can see, I got it for $29.99 at Tammy's Hobbies. Maximum height of 1,000 feet, 305 meters. But the main difference here between the other two-stage rocket that I had previously is that the booster stage is a B or C size motor instead of a D motor on the Savage two-stage rocket that I have. And speaking of the Savage, I actually recovered it. Somebody found it and saw my poster, and because of that, they actually called me and I was able to get it out of the tree that it was stuck in. Unfortunately, it didn't have any video footage of it launching. For some reason, the camera was switched from just regular video to motion detection video, and so it took a bunch of videos of it hanging in the tree when people or some animal would go by. But at least I got the rocket and the altimeter 3 back, which we'll actually look at the altimeter data a little bit later in the video. I have all the data now because I was able to relink the altimeter 3 with my phone, and that was good because the altimeter 3 is a $100 device, and the camera was not as expensive, but it's still equipment, you know, so I'm really glad that I got it back. But I actually lost the first stage of the Savage as well. But I was able to recover the first stage of the other Savage that I lost. So I'll be able to put that back together with this and use that. But unfortunately, the little expansion cone that's supposed to go in here that channels the energy or the fire from the first stage charge into the second stage, that's missing. But I'm just going to make another one and glue that in there. So we're going to fix that up in this video as well. I just got to glue it and click this fin on. But... Also, as another little bonus, I'm going to be fixing this vintage model rocket. I'll be gluing the fin back on this that my uncle gave me. So now I'm going to start assembly on the Big Bertha. So we'll switch to time lapse here. Something that may be confusing at first when building model rockets is this yellow piece here. It looks like it's a piece that's supposed to go in the model rocket engine housing piece. And in the instructions, let me tell you, these instructions are terrible at telling you how to build these rockets. I mean, it's a pretty simple thing, but just the way that they show you how to put the things in there, like they don't draw it very well, or it's just kind of impossible to draw well. But if you look really hard, you'll find that this is called the spacer tool. So depending on the rocket you're building, you'll mark it at a different length. So, so this one has a quarter inch in of a mark. And that means that we stick this in to the model rocket housing until there's a quarter inch left, like so. And as you can see, I've already marked the outside of the housing. Okay, so for this next step here, we're going to use another tool that's described in the pamphlet but not very well. So we're gonna be using this piece of balsa wood cut out from one of the fin pieces that are around the fins, what it's held in, as kind of a stick to place the glue on the inside of the housing of the motor mount. So here we'll put some glue on the tip, a decent amount because we're gonna be spreading it in a circle. Apply a little more, just to be sure. And it looks good, so now we're going to put our little spacer in. And we're going to make sure it is lined up nicely. And actually, while this guy is drying over here, we're going to do the same thing for the upper stage, just so that we can start letting that one dry too. 
So the next step here is going to involve sanding. So I got some sandpaper. But first, we're actually going to be cutting out these little cardboard holders for the motor mount. These will hold the motor mount in the main body of the rocket. And this is actually the one for the booster stage, because we have the booster stage drying for longer. And lastly, you can actually just poke these out like this. Now, we're going to be sanding because these pieces are going to be glued onto the inside of this piece. Actually, not this piece, this piece. So, we're just going to lightly sand, especially sanding, we're going to be sanding these nubs off here. So, just going to lightly do that. Okay, so now that we've let this set and dry, we're going to now glue and apply it to the outer part of the bottom stage here. And that'll be a sufficient amount of glue for that side. And so we'll quickly apply some to the inside here. This whole job requires a decent amount of gluing because you have this whole rocket body. And now, just to make sure that that part down there is glued in well. I'm going to apply a bit more to the tip here and we'll let it drip down like this and we'll just apply it to the sides here and we'll smear it around just so that we have an extra coating of strength. We'll do the same thing on the bottom too actually. Okay so now that we have that done we're going to start cutting out the fins here for the bottom booster stage. So we'll bring down our fin panel and as you can see I've already cut out one of them because I used part of the balsa wood to apply glue. So I need to cut out all of them. Right. Use our exacto knife here and just do small cuts around the little wood pegs that connect the fins, like so. And I believe that's all of them. So now, just take them out by hand. So we have two more to retrieve, and then I'll show you what we need to do next after getting the fins out. Because there is one more thing that needs to be done to the fins before they are attached to the rocket body. Okay, now that we've cut all the fins out, like so, we can stack them up like this, and we can sand them around the edges, all simultaneously. That's why we stack them up in a line like this here. Grab our sandpaper. Gotta make sure they're lined up so they're sanded evenly. There we go. My camera actually died, but while I was charging it, I actually installed the engine and the fins on the bottom stage and then I also installed the engine mount onto the top stage and main body. So now we'll switch back over to time lapse and we're going to cut out, sand, and install the main body fins. step is installing the fins on the main body and how we do this is we take this piece that comes in the instruction manual here and each of these represents one of the fins 
and you wrap it around the main rocket body like so. You line these lines up here, and now we can take our pencil and mark off where each fin is. Alright, there we go. So while we're waiting for the main rocket body fins to dry, we can actually repair the other rocket's booster stage here. So first, we'll see how it lines up. Just apply a little bit of glue. And we'll snap her in. Get rid of some of the excess. And there we go. That'll also be ready for launch tomorrow. So to finish the fins of the main stage, I actually had to put it in a vise. So I wasn't taking video of it at that time. But now I actually have it painted, and so I'm going to let it set and dry, and then I'm going to actually put some red paint on it later um, so I can see it better in the sky. But I tried to use red paint for the whole thing, but the paint can was broken, so I had to use this gray paint here, which I think still looks really good. I think it honestly probably looks better, but it'll just be harder to see in the sky. All right, here it is. I call it the Mercury One because I think that's a better name than the Big Bertha. But as you can see, we got Jacob Lipke Studios going up the side there too. We got JLS going up the side of the nose cone. We've got it going across the side and there's a hatch there with some windows. And then, got my phone number down there so that if somebody just recovers it, they can call the number that's right there. <laughs> Wow, right above. Well, that was quite a successful launch. The Mercury One here of Jacob Lipke Studios flew very straight. I applied the fins very well. It also had a very nice recovery except for the fact that it drifted too far. But it was in the proper place and it had a clean recovery burst. The only issue with the rocket is that the main booster housing was actually blown out during what I think was the recovery burst phase. Unfortunate, but I can get a build your own motor kit and repair it. And I definitely will because Mercury One is a very important test rocket for the final experiment. Now I'll also quickly show you guys the few other repairs that I did during this time. Now the first one is on this Nova payloader. I actually glued this fin back on. But this is a very cool rocket. As you can see, it has a payload bay, a clear payload bay. And I don't know how you're supposed to get into it. It looks like my uncle, who I got these vintage rockets from, actually glued both ends in. So I'll just have to detach one end and then glue the nose cone back on. I also did work on this Estes Carde. And this is actually an Estes rocket too, but it's called a Nova. But this is a Carde rocket by Estes. And I just glued this fin back into place. Now the last repair I did was not on a vintage rocket like the last two, but this was on the booster stage of my Estes Savage. Now I told you guys I needed something to channel the exhaust 
from the first stage back into the second stage. And so I built this out of a cut off part of a D motor and then I cut off part of the spacer that I showed you guys earlier, the yellow spacer, just enough of that so that it would fit just around the top of the second stage. So, fits perfectly. And now we have a restored SD Savage, the highest flying rocket. Next, we'll go over some of the altimeter data. Now, something that's interesting to me is that this was said to fly up to a thousand feet. It only got to 495. I don't know what the explanation for that would be, but it says up to, so it's supposed to fly anywhere in between X and a thousand feet, right? But when I got the information back for the SD Savage, it was tested to have flown up to 1087 feet. So that's actually what it is supposed to fly to. But keep in mind that the SD Savage uses a D for its first stage booster. However, the SD's Boosted Bertha uses a C size motor for its booster stage. So real quick here, I wanted to show what I call my maneuverable landing or vehicle escape model rocket. So how this works is there's four small quarter to half A motors that are along the side of around the middle of the rocket, right? and you have a channel here that will channel the exhaust recovery gases up through the body but you you won't have them going through this part here which is where you'll have your motors you also have a battery for ignition and to power an rc microcontroller so the microcontroller will send power to any of these four motors here so in demonstration let's say your model rocket is floating towards a house and it's about to land on the roof, right? You have your controller here, which has four buttons. There's also a big red line painted underneath one of the thrusters of the model rocket so you can see how the rocket is oriented in the air from the ground, okay? So you press these buttons and each of these buttons will activate one of these motors, okay? So let's say it's floating towards the house. You press the button on the opposite side of the motor that you're trying to fire because that will push the rocket towards the direction that you're pushing the button. So let's say it's floating over the house this way. You push the left button. The right motor will fire and push the rocket a little bit that way, away from the house. And I actually devised another recovery system in case the rocket is floating over houses. If it is floating over a house or towards a tree or something where you don't want it to land, you could press a button and that would activate a microcontroller, which will first release the main parachute, which has already been deployed, right? Because it's drifting. So it releases the main parachute. This causes the rocket to start falling really fast. So it stops drifting and it starts falling instead, coming down towards the ground faster. At almost the same time as the parachute is cut, it actually deploys a parachute again, another parachute that's kept in the top portion of the rocket. And that's actually deployed by an electronically controlled burst right here. So the microcontroller says to open up and release the first chute and then immediately almost releases the second chute. So it drops for a few seconds and then the second parachute activates and it slows it down again. So that you have some kind of control over the rocket in the case that it's gonna start floating over a house or into something where you won't be able to get it down. Something that I think is cool about it in general is that a lot of actual like vehicles that use parachutes, this is, a lot of them actually do this, where like, not for this reason, but they will, as they're falling, they will cut their parachute, like deploy the parachute so that they will actually, cause the parachute will float up as they land. So what they'll do is they'll, right before they land, they'll just cut the parachute and then the parachute will float up instead of falling down onto them. So um, I've also seen it in other vehicles that are not like manned. That is okay where if they hit the ground a little bit faster, I've seen where they cut the parachute a little bit higher even so that it doesn't drift as much. And then obviously this could be added upon even further where you put another one of these microcontrollers up here minus the burst obviously where it just cuts the second parachute too in case you need it to fall even more you know so you could have uh, main chute cut which will then deploy the second parachute and then you can have another button that cuts the second parachute too that would be cool as well